Association of Brightwood, uh, Vacate Brightwood Health Center, family physician, uh, co-convener of Fund Our Communities Not War. They put together uh, with folks out in the Boston way um, the uh, budget for all uh, the, uh, uh, ballot questions. Their numbers? Okay. They're good. Channel 22 here today because why? I'm here today because 75% of the people who were able to vote for this budget for all voted for it. And it is very specific in its demands that we not cut social programs, that we do cut the military, that we get out of that we tax the rich and that we create green jobs. And that should be the basis on which uh, the Senator Kerry and Senator Brown, along with uh, President Ob Obama, are negotiating in this so-called fiscal cliff time. So you don't want to see any spending that would harm poor and working people. Actually, a budget people who should be paying for our government and our country's budget are the people who can most afford it. And cuts should be made in the things that we least need. Um, and that was the sense of people in Massachusetts, 75% of them. Overwhelming in every single district in which the ballot question appeared. Said that this is the kind of country that they want. The budget is a moral document, and we want morality to prevail. That's Massachusetts. How do you think that this is going to play in the rest of the country? I don't know. I would. How much support do you have from the Congressional delegation in Massachusetts? It's very strong, and we'll actually be giving that out to you. It says who who supports the budget for all. Okay, and it's really quite strong. Okay, but we want to impress this upon Senators Kerry and Brown, and I think we need to get to the general here. Coalition. Who are you? So it's the Fund the Wars Coalition. Fund our, yeah, fund, fund our communities, not war. Yeah. And you are. And we're the. And we're doing the budget for all, and not. And we're not doing the deal for all. The deal yeah. for all is. I mean, we have to make those distinctions. People yeah. are getting confused. We don't want the grand bargain if it entails cutting social security. If it entails. So hands off Medicare, social security, Medicaid. That's right. Significant cuts in the military budget. That's right. We want to talk about prosperity, not austerity. That's right. We want to talk about revenue. So he should not be, cuts. This is the spokesman right here. Yeah. So are you right. speaking hey, as a? Hey, as Packy, a, how are you? I'm very good. Oh, You're good speaking morning. as. Heck, I'll interview you too. Packy's going to do it. No, no. I'm going, to, I'm going to piggyback Look you. Come on. Tell me, is, that's the pro. Tim Carpenter with Progressive Democrats of America. We're here today to send a loud and clear message to our elected officials following the election. That's the middle class and the working poor who have won the election, not Wall Street. We're here to let our members of Congress know specifically hands off Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. This isn't our time to be talking about putting them on the table, rather than defending them. We're here today to say prosperity, not austerity. We need a job stimulus. We're not going to cut our way out of this budget crisis we find ourselves in. What we need is a president who's willing to take the majority of folks that voted for him and get on with the work, roll back the Bush tax cuts, cut the military budget to redirect and bring those monies back home. Folks here today represent a broad-based coalition of citizen activists, labor activists, those that are working every day. So we're here to send a loud and clear message to Senators Kerry, Senator Brown, on his way out, and finally to Congressman Neal to get with the program, get with the majority of Americans who want prosperity, not austerity. I know a lot of people sounds like he's willing to give on uh, some entitlement programs in return to getting Republicans to agree to uh, uh, increase the amount of taxes that wealthy well, first, people pay. Are you uh, are you in favor of that balanced approach? Well, first of all, we have to just keep looking at her. First of all, we just have to address the whole question of whether or not we're even in a fiscal crisis. First of all, that's a bogus argument to begin with. The president has set up a false debate. We won this debate 14 months ago with the Simpson Bowles Commission, affectionately known as the Cat Food Commission, in which at that time this whole entitlement program was put on the table, and at that time they couldn't even get the 18 votes they needed, rather only 15. And it was Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky who led the fight to put the military budget on. So this whole debate on a fiscal cliff is a bogus one to begin with. Again, what we need to talk about is a job stimulus. We need to be moving the economy, not cutting. So we need to let our president know that it's stop trying to go across the aisle to reach out to Republicans and get back to the progressive side of the aisle and work with those progressives that were recently elected and those progressives.
in Congress that want to get on with the job of working for the middle class, not Wall Street. Thank you. I think they want you. People want, we want to continue to fund basic human needs and, and human services. We need to fund Social Security. We cannot cut back Medicare, Medicaid. We have to keep unemployment insurance going. We need to have green jobs, education. Our schools are falling apart. We need housing. And we're, we, the people in Massachusetts have made their voices really clear that the way that we can do this, because we are not in some kind of major financial crisis, this is an incredibly wealthy nation, trillions on war. We have homeless people in America. It's time to fund our communities, not war. This is what democracy really looks like. Bring our troops home now because we can't, we can't afford to fund a budget that's bankrupting America. We're going to go off the cliff because they're not doing the right thing. This is what the people want. This is the budget for all, for the people. Enough is enough. You want to fix America? Start with this. This is the starting point of all evil right here. Start, start with the budget for all. Fix our communities, not war. Bring the troops home now. Military spending has, has put us in this position. For the last 10 years, we've been at war. If it was so good, we should be living in Nirvana. It is so bad that we're at the point, at the boiling point now, where we are going to fall off the cliff. It's time to bring our troops home now. The only good thing that comes out of war is death and destruction and the, and the crisis that we're in now. Thank you. Right. Right. A rise for social justice. You know, we just had a gas explosion in the heart of the homeless community in Springfield. Now, this gas explosion did not cause a crisis in homelessness in Springfield. It just made the crisis that we already have a lot worse. So we have Taylor Street uh, Mission is not able to stay open, and people, up to 60 men who stay there, are not able to stay there. There's an apartment building at 503 Worthington for people who used to be homeless, and they can't stay there right now because the building needs major repairs. And every week, dozens of people come to Arise, single people, let alone the families, but single people saying, where can I find a room that I can afford? How can I get off the streets? How can I turn my life around if I don't even have a roof over my head? Well, let me tell you, there's plenty of money. The HUD budget get cut, gets cut every year, and it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to make the choices that we have been making. We have plenty of money for housing. There's not one good reason that homelessness should still exist in this country. So bring our war dollars home, fund our communities now. Yeah. Rick Brown, he's the president of the Pioneer Valley AFL-CIO. Yeah. Hello, Springfield. Hello. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, they talk about a financial Thank cliff that's coming. Thank you. And Everybody's the only people that I see that are going to be going off that cliff are senior citizens, public employees, working families, and let me tell you who should be going off that cliff. Who should we be pushing off that cliff, making them pay their fair share, making them pay a little bit more, which was actually their patriotic duty. It's patriotic to pay taxes. Well, let me tell you who should be going off that cliff. Paris Hilton, the whole Kardashian family, and Donald
Donald Trump. There you go. God forbid that they should have to pay their fair share. A few, a few pennies more. A few, well, in their case, a few million more. But they've got it. They've got it as a result of living in this great nation. And if you want to live here, you need to support it. And they need to pay their fair share. And it's uh, it's something that really needs to happen. There is no financial clip. There's no reason we should be going off anything. We just need a fair tax system where they provide revenues to keep this country strong and moving forward. Thank you. Yeah. Democrats of America. Yeah. Good morning. Chris of Democrats of America is proud to stand with our coalition. Uh, we are a broad-based coalition, as you can see, of the working poor, middle class, labor, those that are making a difference day in and day out. Today's press conference is very simple. It's time for those of us here at Main Street to get on with our victory that we had in November. This whole talk of a fiscal cliff is a bogus argument. Let's be clear on what's being talked about. There is no fiscal cliff. What we're lacking is a president who's willing to stand firm with those who voted this past November to protect Social Security, to protect Medicaid and move us towards single-payer health care for all. What we're lacking is a president who's willing to stand up and tax Wall Street with a speculation tax. What we need is an increase in our monies, not a cut. We need to move towards jobs for all. Again, PDA is proud to be here. This meeting today is not in isolation. Over 70 similar events took place across this country last Wednesday when over 100 activists took to the halls of Congress where we found only one member who was in his office. And no surprise to many of us, that was Jim McGovern, who understands clearly what this issue is all about. This is a fight for Main Street, not Wall Street. We stand here committed to these programs, not only to defend them, but to ask for increases in Social Security and to get on with the work for single will pay it for all. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you in the streets and in the suites. The social worker, Priscilla Lynch. Hi, I'm a social worker. I've been a social worker for the... I've been a social worker for the past 25 years, working with children and families. As a social worker, that means I care about people and I work for social justice. How am I supposed to be able to help people when there aren't any resources for folks. I see children living in motels and hotels. I see children who can't get to school because of busing. I see families who can't feed their families, and I have no resources for them. I know that to be wrong, and I know that we have plenty of money in this country for our children and our families, and it's time we started spending our money on ourselves. And we also have to think about everyone in this world, all of the children and the families in this world. And we have to stop spending our money bombing other people. The children in Fallujah are suffering and being born with extra extremities, body parts outside of their bodies, internal organs outside of their bodies, because of the depleted uranium we've left there. The children in Gaza are playing with depleted uranium from our bombs that the Israelis buy with our money. We have to put an end to this, and we have to use all of our resources to help all of the people of the world. <laughs> That's what I have to say. Thank you. for all, probably all of us that support budget for all when it comes to our federal priorities are also supporting an act to invest in our communities at the state level. And we need to remember that the problem is the same, that the tax burden has been shifting more and more away from those that can really afford to pay, corporations and the wealthy in this country, and the burden has been shifting onto our communities um, struggling to make ends meet. And so the solution is also the same, that we need to shift that burden back onto the people that can afford to pay um, so that we can, we can invest in the things that all of our communities need. And the question I have is, how do you fix a deficit? Ta tax, tax, tax the rich. How do you fix a deficit? Tax, tax, tax the rich. How do you fix a deficit? Not increasing funding for public housing. They're not. There's not enough funding for providing shelter, and there's not real programs for holding the banks accountable for the types of practices that they cause to create not only a housing crisis but an entire economic crisis. 
And the reality is, is that until we put forward policies and budgets that put people before profit, that creates an economy that works for the needs of people before the profits of big banks and corporations, we're going to keep dealing with these things. We're going to keep finding ourselves up against these battles. Now is the time that it's, I'm proud to be here with everybody. We're standing for an economy that works for people. Housing that's for people, not profit. Healthcare that's for people, not profit. Public housing that's for people, not profit. Right? Jobs that are for people, not profit. Because corporations are not people. Corporations are not the ones that should be the only ones benefiting from our economy. And we need to change this conversation that somehow our economy goes as corporations go. Our economy goes as the people of our country and of this world go. Thank you. The Mass Senior Action. Good morning, everybody. I want to make sure that you hear me. I'm talking about a subject that I strongly believe in, Social Security. Social Security has not added one penny to the deficit. Medicare and Medicaid has also improved the lives of millions of Americans of all age. These vital programs have not caused the deficit the country faces. Instead of reckless tax cuts, loopholes uh, for the wealthy and the greedy, Wall Street behave have. It is time for us to tell Congress hands off of Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Make those who cause the deficit pay for it. And I'm going to quote something, uh, a, a piece from Senator Bernie Sanders. There are fair ways to reduce the one trillion federal deficit and 16 trillion national debit. But balancing the budget on the back of the elders, the sick, the children, the poor is not them. Yeah, that's right. Sandra said, we are here today to send a very loud and a very clear message to the leadership in the House, the, in the Senate and in the White House. Do not cut Social Security. Do not cut Medicare. Do not cut Medicaid. And do not provide more taxes break to the top of 2% who are doing phenomenally well and have cases have never had it so good. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I come here as a doctor today. The doctor's office in a poor community is where the rubber meets the road for financial crisis and lack of services to poor people. We are the ones who must help people who have headaches, depression, chest pain, hunger, cold, violence, drug and alcohol abuse because of lack of jobs, lack of housing, lack of AFDC, lack of means of living, lack of unemployment benefits. We have to become advocates, not just writing prescriptions and putting people into hospitals where they can get better. Our focus is on the health of our patients. And the proposed budget deal is very unhealthy. We, there can be no cuts to Medicare and Medicaid, which are essential to our doing our jobs for the people who need it most. And there can be no cuts to housing, SNAP, unemployment, veterans benefits, all the things that allow people not to get sick. We, my colleagues and I, demand that there be no cuts to the social safety net, especially Medicare and Medicaid, but all the social safety net. And instead, the military budget be cut, we withdraw from Afghanistan, the rich be taxed, and we have the kind of country that all of us want. Thank you. Thank you. 
Morning, everybody. Morning. So I'm here to talk about gr good green jobs. They do exist. Uh, contrary to what we heard from uh, at least one of our presidential candidates this, this year, the problem is, is that the green revolution that we keep hearing about is not being able to be participated in by everybody. Well, the three partners that I'm speaking with, speaking for today, uh, Co-op Power, Energia, and Nuestras Raices, uh, are, are working in the other direction. Uh, we have a green jobs training program combined with the GED program to bring uh, disadvantaged young people from Holyoke and Springfield into the green revolution. And I'm telling you, we've created over 120 green, good green jobs with fair living wages over the last four years. So it does, it does exist. Um, one, one small story, one of the many small stories, in Holyoke there's an apartment building with 10 apartments in it, 10 families living in it. Three years ago, there was only one working family out of these 10 families. After the, uh, the Green Jobs Training Program called Roots Up, run by Nuestras Raices, uh, we now have six working families out of 10 in this, in this one building. That's just one small story. Um, so there are good green jobs. We believe in local partnerships, local investment, local spending. And we say, who owns it matters. Uh, good green jobs certainly do exist, and a path to prosperity certainly exists. A way out of our current economic woes also exists. Support the green revolution, support good green jobs for Western Massachusetts, support our working families, and support the budget for all. Thank you. Uh, yes, the faith community feels very strong about this. Our group has worked for the very hard for this budget for all referendum. And I've talked to many men and friends of mine who are in other faith communities. Our faith requires that we care for the poor, the orphans, the elderly, the widows. Uh, and it's an immoral thing to be cutting Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid. Uh, we want to be on the moral side of history and say no more cuts to entitlements, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and other services that help all the people that need them. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out on this cold day. It's really great to see how many uh, different groups are here that care about uh, the federal budget and the values it embodies. Um, I work with students at the five colleges and other campuses in Western Mass, and they're hurting. Uh, tuition has gone up over the past uh, 10 years, like over 100% or more. It's going faster than inflation. And uh, funding for public higher education, higher education has gone down over that same decade. So more and more students are graduating with debt, debt in uh, an economy where they still can't find jobs. So I think, you know, there's no fis there's not a fiscal cliff. There's a cliff for working people. There's a cliff for working people, for their jobs, for their health care, for their retirement security. And I have to say that students are in solidarity with everyone else here. We, too, know that we want to have retirement. It's a long way off, but we want retirement security. We want jobs. We want to have uh, an economy that works for us. And we need to see leadership, real leadership from our leaders. We can't let them off. We cannot let them off. These, this next four years, we have to hold them accountable every single day. And I know young people want that. That's what I have to say. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. UAW Local 2322, and he's going to send us out in a strong finish before we deliver our letters. Thank you. Right. No pressure. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. In the labor movement, we call each other brothers and sisters because we believe we are in a shared struggle, and I think that's what we have here. I am going to have to rely on some notes because I am at that age where I don't always remember things well. Um, and I hope Medicare is there when I need it. Um, American workers have been under attack for 30 years, and this is just the latest fabricated crisis being dubbed the fiscal cliff. It's just another example of Wall Street corporate CEOs, the banking industry, Republicans, and some of our Democratic friends who continue to attack and, and are attempting to have the deficit reduction fall on the backs of middle class and working families. They want to impose cuts to vital programs such as Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. I, for one, am tired of these programs being referred to rather snidely by some individuals as entitlements. 
It's not an entitlement. We pay for it. As a reminder to those who feel that anyone who receives or may receive these benefits being part of the electorate that Mitt Romney so contemptuously referred to as the 47 percent that Obama bought off to win the election, we pay for those benefits. The employers pay and we pay. Um, we have a, a tax that we pay on that, uh, and, and it's ridiculous to keep calling them entitlements. Social Security does not contribute one penny to the deficit because it is funded independently by that payroll tax. In fact, the Social Security Trust today, according to the Social Security Administration, has a $2.7 trillion surplus and can pay 100% of all benefits owed to every eligible American for the next 21 years. Social Security, as well as Medicare and Medicaid, must be protected. President Obama and the Democrats want a divisive victory. We the people spoke. The Democratic leadership must stand with the middle class and working families of our country, not the corporations, CEOs, Wall Street, banking industries, or other special interests. We must demand that our elected representatives make sure that any deficit reduction is done in a way that is fair and equitable and not on the backs of the poor, elderly, sick, children, etc. As Congress reconvenes and addresses this artificially created fiscal cliff, they cannot reduce the deficit by cutting the programs that work for families that they rely on for the most. Instead, we must eliminate the Bush tax cuts favoring the top 2%. These are not tax increases. They are merely the rest restoration of tax taxes that were there for people who can well afford it. We must also end the outdated tax policies that allow about 25% of the largest, most profitable corporations in this country to pay absolutely nothing in federal income taxes. It is time that we, the people who pay these taxes, and, um, you know, oh God, it makes me so angry, um, that, that we get what we've paid for, that the people at the top who can afford to pay more do, and that we stop all this nonsense and actually listen to what the people vote voted for, which was for our benefit, not for the richest people in this country. Thank you very much. Yeah. Or else I guess we're going in there. I don't know which. We'll find out in a moment. But let's deliver these letters. Yeah. Senator Kerry, Senator Brown, expressing the sentiments of this great group. And let's give everybody a hand. This is, yeah. this is, this is what solidarity looks like. It's just the start. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Senator Scott Brown's office, and I just wanted to say thank you guys for coming out today, and I really appreciate, you know, the input that you've put here in, 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 in writing to us, and I will definitely carry this message on to the Senator, so thank you, and uh, I know Matt from Senator Kerry's office is here as well. Well, will the uh, Senators see the letters and the whole packet themselves? I'm going to scan it in and email it today. Okay. Yes, I will do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matthew Martin from Senator John Kerry's office. Um, I just came here with a couple of brief statements. Um, you know we all face unprecedented economic challenges, yeah. both domestically and globally. Um, Senator Kerry has insisted throughout his career that the Senate, okay. and most recently as a member of the Joint Select Committee on um, Deficit Reduction, known as the Super Committee, um, that any acceptable solution to solve our long-term deficit problems of the United States must be a balanced approach and must be um, crafted in a way that reflects our national priorities. Um, he will not support approaches that balance the budget off the backs of poor and middle class. Yeah. And poor and middle class yeah. Yeah. Say it again. Do it. Okay. okay. He will not support approaches that balance the budget off the backs of poor and middle class in order to continue tax breaks um, that were unfairly skewed towards wealthy yeah. and substantially yeah. increased our yeah. to not substantially yeah. increase our national debt. Um, he believes in order to reduce the deficit that everything has to be on the table, but will work hard to ensure that vital programs such as Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid are strengthened so that beneficiaries receive their guaranteed benefits. Yes. So that's the statement that he will share. the military and get out of Afghanistan? Um, I, can't, I can't make any promises. Um, obviously, the military is on the table with the sequestration. So, okay.